you click off the video, the story ends. You wake up in your bed tomorrow and believe whatever you want to believe. You click the like button, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole can go. Don't go too deep though, you'll end up in Australia. Whilst we have some nice beaches, there's a lot of stuff that'll kill you. Like this thing, or this thing. Welcome back guys, my name's Dylan Dance. I'm a physicist from the land down under. I'm a PhD candidate in astrophysics at Swinburne University. Today we're gonna to break down some of the physics and science in the matrix, which might seem a bit unusual, but I do theoretical astrophysics, right? And we work with the biggest simulations humans have ever created. So currently I'm working with one called Uchu. This thing is almost the same size as the universe. It's about nine and a half billion light years from one side of the box to the other. You might be wondering how close our universe simulations are to the matrix. And the short answer is not close at all. Don't worry though, mathematical anomalies in our simulations don't create neos. At least I think. The matrix is a computer generated dream world in order to change a human being into this be the truth stop See, I, don't, I don't feel like someone would react like that in real life i'd be like yep not surprised bitches <laughs> like really we how, we don't know what's going on like what the hell is going on it would not surprise me if it's something like this i think this is a rather boring uh, this would be rather boring if it turned out to be something like this to be honest i ho i'd hope for more like you know something far more incomprehensible Hello, Neil. Who are you? The guy from KFC. I am the architect. You know, Chomp. You're a liar if you say you've never tried this move as a child. A fun little fact about this scene that you might not know of is that they actually didn't use CGI for that scene. Keanu Reeves dodged real bullets. So obviously in the Matrix, Neo can do whatever the hell he wants. He's basically God. But if we replace Neo with, say, me, I want to work out if I could dodge these bullets. Because I'd love to be able to dodge some bullets. So let's do some calculations. I'm not going to show any math. Don't worry. Don't go anywhere. I'll work it out and I'll be right back. So in this scene, I just worked out it would take the bullet about 0.02 seconds to get to Neo. Now that's a problem because the human reaction time is about 0.17 seconds. So you're dead many times. So please don't try to dodge any bullets in real life. You can't do it. Okay, so I just worked out the torque produced by Neo's motion in this scene. And it works out to be about 2.7 times 10 to the 6 Newton meters. Now that's comparable to the magnitude of thrust produced by the launch of the space shuttle. <laughs> the force required to break a human bone is only about 4,000 Newtons his knees would shatter. I mean, the magnitude of this talk would crack even diamonds. This is the construct. It's our loading program. We can load any... I gotta get me some of those right glasses. Now, we're inside a computer program. Is it really so hard to believe? This isn't real. What is real? How do you define real? Taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. So I know this isn't exactly what he's talking about. He's talking about how our brain processes reality, which is another whole thing entirely. But I also love another aspect to this, which relates to one of my favorite ever quotes. Everything we call real is made up of things we cannot regard as real. But we know that it was us that scorched the sky. At the time, they were dependent on solar power. The human body generates more bioelectricity than a 120 volt battery and over 25,000 BTUs of body. Yeah, but the problem is we use most of that. <laughs> Humans are very inefficient batteries. You know, we require all this energy each day, about 2,000 calories, and we use pretty much all of it. So we are, we would not make a good battery. That's a big problem I have with this film. We're not going to dwell on it for too long, though. There's a lot of problems I have with the actual science of this bit, but combined with yeah. a form of fusion, the machines. Have That's what I mean. Combined with a form of fusion, that is like the biggest throwaway I've ever heard. You, if these robots could do fusion, why the hell would they need humans as a battery source? Because fusion is what's happening at the core of the sun. It pretty much means unlimited energy because there's no shortage of hydrogen in the universe. Fields where human beings are no longer born. And that is exactly why I am not convinced 
we should be broadcasting our presence to the rest of the universe. I don't know if it would turn out very great for us if we were to come across a more intelligent species out there, especially one that was capable of traversing the stars. That means they'd be well ahead of us. And look how we treat, I don't want to say lesser creatures, but creatures that are different. Why am I here? Your life is the sum of a remainder of an unbalanced equation inherent to the programming of the Matrix. And what? that is my favorite scene and line of the series. I love that. <laughs> so I'm going to try and avoid things that I think a lot of you will already know, because I want to touch on things you might not know. Um, a lot of this stuff has been in the public domain for a while now, so there's a lot I will just skip. For example, you've probably all heard, you know, with the rate of computer simulations and how much they're improving and how quickly it's probably not going to be too much longer until we have something like the matrix you know like a really really realistic simulation of reality where you can't distinguish between reality and a simulation of course that's coming and then there's that other idea that you know elon's always spouting on about how you know if it is possible to create a simulation of the universe well that means it's probably likely that we're already in a simulation. Personally, I do think it is possible to simulate a realistic universe and a reality like we're currently in. Another little idea I have that I'll share with you guys, um, you've probably heard of the Fermi Paradox, which is about, you know, why there's no aliens around, you know, when some of our calculations show that there should be, they should be everywhere in the universe, but we don't see any. Well, obviously, like, Neil deGrasse Tyson has pointed out, I love this answer. He goes, it's like going up to the ocean, getting a spoon of water and going, well, there's no whales in the ocean. But anyway, I'm gonna provide an idea for a solution to said Fermi paradox. If we're living in a simulation uh, and consciousness is a really expensive process to simulate computationally, maybe that's why we don't see other life out there in the universe. Because within this big simulation, you've got, you know, all the stars and you've got the planets. There's not much in between them. You've got the islands, which are the galaxies. And maybe that stuff isn't too computationally expensive. It's very easy to simulate, maybe. And the consciousness stuff is really hard. And so you can only have a little bit of it in the universe. So if we really are in a giant simulation like the Matrix and consciousness is really hard to simulate, well, maybe we really are the only life in the universe. Please remember this is all speculative. There's a lot of ifs there. I'm doing it because it's fun. If we are living in the matrix, well, maybe a physicist by the name of Jim Gates will be the first to figure it out. So this guy works on string theory stuff, which there is zero evidence for currently. This guy's been looking for supersymmetry all his career. Um, we're not gonna talk about that. We were meant to see it at the LHC, we didn't. So it's not looking good for string theory, let me just say. But anyway, this guy found some really interesting stuff in a, in a deep level of string theory, he found these error correcting mechanisms. And if you've never heard of an error correcting code in computing and programming, well, they're actually used to make things like browsers work. Like, like it basically helps the internet work. Okay, so this led him to sort of speculate in a semi joking way that maybe we're living in a computer simulation. Who knows? But again, string theory, there's no evidence for it. On a little bit of a deeper level, they've basically found these strange graphs which are equivalent to equations. And these equations within them have these things that are analogous to those error correcting codes. So let's now talk about the holographic principle as I promised earlier in the video because this stuff is crazy. And it's another tenet of string theory, so please keep in mind that there's no evidence for this stuff, but it's awesome. And basically it arises from the fact that we don't have a quantum theory of gravity. We do for all the other fundamental forces of nature, the other three that we currently know of. Potentially that other one that you might have heard we recently might have found. But anyway, so we have quantum theories for those other. Gravity is a bit of an exception. In general relativity, which is one of our greatest theories we currently have in physics, it has this idea of gravity being the curvature of space-time, all right? It's nothing more. However, in quantum mechanics, you know, we have no idea what gravity is, but there must be some theory behind gravity in quantum mechanics. And so this is what we call quantum gravity. And people have been working on this for decades and to pretty much no avail. We don't have any great theory of it. There's loop quantum gravity, there's string theory, okay? Holographic principle is within string theory. So the holographic universe can be basically thought of as like a universe in virtual reality. And the idea is that 
the three-dimensional universe we live in is basically projected from a two-dimensional screen of quantum pixels. And the physics on that two-dimensional screen give rise to the quantum gravity behavior in the virtual universe. So we've already mentioned quantum computing and error correcting codes in this video already, but now let's link what I'm talking about now to both of them. Because in 2014, some theoretical physicists found some really cool stuff and now working with the theoretical play playground of choice called anti de Sitter space, which is a universe that works like a hologram. You know, we were just talking about this holographic principle, right? And to again reiterate this idea, it's that the bendy fabric of space-time itself is a projection from entangled quantum particles living on its boundary. And they did calculations that suggest that this holographic emergence of space-time works just like a quantum computing error correcting code. So they're basically suggesting that space-time itself is a code in this anti de Sitter universe, which we know we don't live in, by the way. So these quantum correction algorithms basically find and fix errors within quantum computers, okay? They protect quantum information from errors that arise basically due to uh, decoherence and quantum noise. A lot of quantums in there, <laughs> you're really gonna have to look into some of this stuff yourself because it's going to take way too long to explain all of these terms. So this two-dimensional stuff in the holographic principle uh, reminds me of another really awesome thing that I've been reading about recently which doesn't really have anything to do with the matrix or the universe being a simulation but it's equally crazy and they've just been proven to exist and they're particles, the quasi-particles I should say, that only exist in two dimensions. The guy who discovered these theoretically was asked about their properties and he basically said, anything goes, and that's where the name comes from, anions. So like I said, they're quasi-particles. So they're like a particle in that they have a location and potentially a mass, but they will, they, they're will only observable as a collective behavior of other more conventional particles. You won't be able to ever isolate one of these things. Think of the intricate geometric shapes made by group behavior in nature, like a flock of birds or a school of fish as they move around and you'll have what I'm picturing in my head. So the existence of these anions was originally inferred by something called quantum topology, which sounds really complicated, but it's basically just the properties of the shapes made by quantum systems. And now there's actual evidence for these things existing, which is awesome because there was years of theoretical work that went into figuring out what the hell these things are. And these things, again, might be extremely useful for quantum computing. That'll do for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. I'm going to be making a Spider-Man video, Doctor Strange video. So stick around. I'll catch you next time.